Welcome to another exciting episode of Novelty with your favorite girl, Aina Raiza Kweyo. Today we are here at the Goethe Institute where they promote the German language and culture. As if that was not enough, they are also busy promoting STEM. They offer classes on robotics for children. Today I am so excited to be chatting with parents as well as the PR team for Goethe Institute. All you have to do, my darling, is sit back, relax, buckle up, and let's take a ride into the world of science. Whitney Houston once said, teach them well and let them lead the way. Today, I have the pleasure of talking to a woman who is doing exactly that, investing in her children's future. Her name is Anderlin. How are you doing? I'm well. How are you? I am fantastic. Let's talk about, you know, the importance of nurturing your children's craft from a young age. Why is that important for you? You know, when kids become adults, yeah. what they know is what they've been taught as children. Yeah. So you cannot only develop love and nurturing at home, they need to be social as well. Mm. So you need to have different aspects put into their childhood. Yes. yes. All right, and today we are at the Gutha Institute where yes. they offer, you know, classes for robotics for children basically who are interested in taking up a STEM as a career maybe or as just just to learn something you know children have curious minds when did you discover the lessons at Gutha Institute okay so I think uh, um, about a year ago yeah uh, um, my son did his first level here of the robotics mm. so uh, um, after that I've been following their social media pages to see what they have to offer and I, I think they have very good programs running here okay yes and then how do you then decide that you know what let me enroll my son in these classes did he show signs that this is something that he's interested in or is it was was it like a parental thing where you're just like you know what whether you like it or not no. you are going to learn robotics no <laughs> so i have two children yeah have, they have a trial program so mm -hmm. i brought them to the trial program and the one didn't show interest yeah but because my son is more of uh, um he likes playing computer games he likes the cell phones so i I thought he would be more appropriate for it and he actually loved the program so I kept him in the program. Mm. So this year I'm trying my daughter again. If she doesn't like it, yeah. this will not be for her. But for him, it's his thing. Maybe try a painting class or, or, or fashion design. No, as parents you can't force your kids <laughs> yeah. to do what the other child likes also. Yeah. yeah. We grew up in an era um, where our parents deemed some careers, you know, um, not good if i can say not so. appropriate not appropriate <laughs> um, why is it important for you as a parent you know to just accept what your child likes doing and nurture that you know there's one thing as a parent that i've taught myself mm -hmm. as much as I, I had great parents growing up there are certain things that I would change the way they did. Yeah. Yes. I, I decided I'm going to let my kids choose their career paths. I'm going to let them choose their hobbies. Mm. And this is one of the hobbies that I've seen that my kids love. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about your home, um, yes. at home. <laughs> and like you spoke about careers with your son who loves science and who loves robotics and all these things. What is he doing at home? If the TV remote is not working, is he fixing it? Is he, you know, trying to just put everything together and figure out why is it not working? Why is it working you like know, a proper yes. scientist? Would <laughs> yes, do? <laughs> yes. You know, if you go into his pockets right now, yeah. even if I do his laundry, you'll always find a metal piece mm. that he picked up somewhere that he wants to fix something. He always has some nitty gritty metal things in yeah. his pockets. The only toy he buys are Legos. He's okay. always building Legos. So you can see that he's, I always call him my scientist. Mm. Yeah, he's, he's in that field. And he always says that he would like to work for NASA. So oh, this, nice. yeah, this, this morning I told them, <laughs> if you guys don't wash the dishes, we are not going 
to, to robotics and he said maybe I should just build a robot uh, that can wash the dishes, the dishes. <laughs> yeah, so, so these are things you pick up as a parent yes is. these are definitely things you, you won't see him playing uh, um, yeah he plays with boys but you would see them more on the on the phones mm. but is it Roblox yeah, they have yeah, this game yeah, yeah, called Roblox. Roblox. Yeah, I, I, yeah I, I always see them, see them playing that. So so you see your child's interests. Mm. You pick it up and you should nurture it at home. Yes, yeah, and definitely. you should also support it. What do you have to say to parents who are just like, listen, you should go study medicine, you should go do accounting, <laughs> and that's that. At least what I appreciate about science, at least it's not like arts, it's not like that shunned upon. But what do you have to say to parents who are forcing their children into some career paths to secure a better future for them? Guys, I think we, we lose our kids when we do that. Yeah. We definitely, uh, um, you, you put them in a corner. Mm -hmm. Okay, I do understand that you want, you want to secure a future for them, but let kids live their own lives. Mm. Yeah, so I, I would just advise them, let them live their own lives. Okay. Yeah, How old is your son now? He's 10. He's 10. Yes, he and just he wants to ten. work for NASA. Please, Lord, let him take me to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he, that, that's a dream that we are working on. All right. Mm. And in terms of, um, you know, high schools, have you started scouting for schools that are into that particularly you know um are very big on the science field i have not thought of high school yet mm. uh, it's so better sweet for kids to grow up yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so i've not looked into it yet uh, um the first furthest i've thought currently is is for him to finish this third level the second and the third and then i think we will look beyond that and then you will take it from yeah. there definitely so what other extracurricular activities are your children interested in apart from you know science tennis is the one and swimming oh nice, <laughs> nice. nice. yes yeah, so so they need to be physically active mm -hmm. as well so we are looking into tennis and swimming all right mm -hmm. walk us through the process of raising a potential scientist are you feeding him material you know of other scientists does he have to read books from <laughs> you know other scientists what is like your if we can call it you know an the approach an approach yes so my my kids read okay nice. uh, um i i enforce it in my head mm. if you don't read a few minutes a day you're not allowed to have your phones oh you, you must read yeah nice. <laughs> yeah so uh, um i i always have them okay i don't make them read particular books mm. but i see that he will always tell me about the einsteins nice. and there's this dahim guy I, maybe i have the name wrong on on youtube as well so he also follows it's his favorite youtuber mm. so he also follows these science people oh nice so what i can say is i'm patient because these are not things that you want to hear mama every day I, I mm. need you know it's just facts always <laughs> so you, you don't really want to hear these things yeah but be patient with your child your mm. child is I've, I've learned my child is different mm. yeah i don't want to say special yeah but he's different so be patient mm. yes i always say my daughter is the colorful child one, yeah this one is black and white it's facts it's yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> but, but be patient with your child yeah yeah and don't don't take him as uh, um but but this one what is he doing today what is he talking just listen yeah yeah just listen i think you know that's a very very important statement to make because oftentimes i think as parents we talk over our children and we are just the ones giving instruction telling them what to do <laughs> but never you know on the other end just to listen yeah. to and what I, the child is really saying I accept your child for who they are mm. yeah, don't, don't compare don't compare your yeah. child accept them for who they are definitely all right mm. and then with this third level um that uh, your son has to enter the second one now. the second yeah. one yes. tell us about the registration process and you know 
how much these um, levels are should other parents okay. be you know interested in enrolling their children in such okay so what i've learned from this institute they are very very easy to work with mm -hmm. their, their services are very good so uh, um, the first time around we had a registration form emailed to us we filled it in and we sent it back i think i also did my payment online as well yeah so it's very easy uh, um, it was 1600 for the first level i think the second one is also the same price mm. 1600 again and you go for uh, um, eight weeks okay so two months every saturday you have to be at the center mm. i think it's saturdays and wednesdays so if i'm if i'm not out or once a once in the weekdays okay yeah so i chose saturday because we drive in mm. yeah so that is basically it tell us about the reception that you've gotten you know from the institute <laughs> <laughs> so I've, I've dealt with this institute not only for the kids yeah. but also for myself i've done writing classes with them okay. and on both areas they have been so their service have been so good mm. Uh, um, well, I know her. Yeah. yeah, I know her now. Mm. Uh, um, she's so friendly. The the responses per email are very mm. quick. Yeah. Yes, and they even if you call, you can ask the same questions over and over. Again. <laughs> <laughs> They're so patient with you. Yeah. So I think the the service that I've gotten from the institute is very good. All right. Mm. And finally, you spoke about you know coming in. Do you have to drive to Ventuk to just to make your children's dreams come true? Yes. Oh wow. You are really <laughs> every, investing. Every Saturday for two months. Mm. So now I know for the next two months, I'm not having other activities for them. You can't even go drink wine with your girls because you have to come. For the next two months, I'm not doing anything wow. because the kids need to be here. Yeah. Oh wow. Congratulations, <laughs> mom. You're super Thank mom. You. You're doing well. Thank you very a much. A lot of parents would not do that. A lot of parents don't even go for parents meeting in school. No, no, no. Yes, you are here. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. investing so much uh thank you so much for thank taking you. time to have this conversation with me i appreciate it oh, okay all right <laughs> we'll be right back stay with us i am still at the Goethe institute and i am excited to be getting the public relations point of view when it comes to science and robotics that is offered here at Goethe institute how are you doing I'm fine, thank you. How are you doing? I am fantastic. Uh, let's talk about the Gotha Institute at large. Can you please give us a background, like an overview of the organization? What is the work that you do and so forth? Yeah, we, um, the Gotha Institute uh, yeah. is um, the cultural institute of the uh, Federal Republic of Germany. And we foster both a cultural exchange and high quality German tuition, as well as supporting German teachers in Namibian schools. Okay, so what are some of your logos, or some, not logos, I mean some of the perth, uh, some of the goals, excuse me, of the organization? Maybe we can touch a little bit also on the purpose and how things really operate here. The purpose, the purpose really is to, you know, have, like I said, a, a cultural exchange mm -hmm. between Namibia and Germany okay. and to help young Namibian people to also learn the German language mm -hmm. so that they w might have the possibility to be able to study in Germany. We offer those certifications mm -hmm. that you need in order to go apply for, say, a vocational training job in Germany, which we also now have started a program to facilitate for the German app connect mm -hmm. um, as well as learning German or the school learners to learn German as well oh, and nice. then on top of that we also you know have German uh, culture that we actually bring to Namibia for, for people to get to know it uh, as you can see here in our library these are all German publications and movies and mm -hmm. games and 
you know, part of that is our robotics um, program as well. Yeah. You know, to basically bring technology innovation from Europe to Namibia okay. for people to have a, an opportunity to, you know, get to know. All right. Now yeah. that you spoke about, you know, um, robotics, I understand, you know, that uh, robotics is offered here um, as an extracurricular activity, mm -hmm. right? So then I want to find out why is it important for the Gotha Institute, you know, to host such exchanges? Why is it important for the Gotha Gusta Institute, rather, to have such a program here? Um, yeah, that, that is a good question. Um, I can answer it by saying that it is very important for us as people or for the public to, um, sorry, to rediscover libraries as places of learning. Mm -hmm. And traditionally, we know libraries to be for, for reading and learning for books. You know, but um, we also would, we, we are uh, integrating robotic courses to broaden the understanding of learning and adding an interactive, you know, practical yeah. dimension. All right, that is brilliant. Yeah. So we can, uh, you know, children and adults can not only read books, but also gain hands-on experience on technology and engineering. All right. Um, Moving over to our next story, uh, you spoke a lot about you know interchange between German and Namibia. Um, it's a it's a, almost as though there is an interlink between the two countries, and one is international, and for us Namibia is local here. Let's talk about you know the global aspect of things. Uh, we live in a very very competitive world. So what then is the Gotha Institute, apart from, you know, just giving this knowledgeable exchange, what is the Gotha Institute doing to ensure that people who come and study here are able to compete globally, should they go out there in the world, should I go to Germany, um, how can I compete at the same level internationally? Well, first of all, I would say definitely that our uh, well, our German tuition is on the level that is required, yeah. you know, by the German government in order for Namibians or uh, people from other parts of the world to be able to come to Germany and you know study and so on. So that is already a guarantee that that we're on that level, and and we believe that we really offer especially also to the robotics courses. We, we offer um, young people the ability to hone their problem-solving skills as well as their critical thinking skills, which are essential skills to live in a competitive world, mm -hmm. such as the German space is. Um, young people learn how to develop prototype solutions and how mathematics and science concepts they learn at school, they can actually, you know, um, apply to real life situations through, you know, interactive activity. Why did the Gutha Institute decide to integrate, you know, robotics into their learning outline? Why not maybe cooking? Why not, you know, sewing, etc. Is we integrate robotics courses and we offer them because we believe in innovative educational opportunities. We believe that we can, you know, our library can strengthen its role as an educational center by integrating courses such as robotics because we want to attract not just traditional library yeah. goers, library users, but we also want to basically be progressive, mm. you know, and get uh, young people interested in modern approaches to education, basically as an introduction to technology because that's how the modern world functions, especially in countries such as Germany and other countries in the, in the Western world. Okay, and then let's bring the conversation to public relations. Um, what, do, what do you do 
to make sure that you know the good that institute has good publicity and that the good that institute is visible and that all the programs whether it be it cultural promotions be it you know lessons on robotics on german how do you ensure that the good that institute is visible and how do you then also deal with the bad publicity yeah, so we basically uh, are a open, welcoming institution. Mm -hmm. So we host a lot of uh, cultural events, um, sort of like open days, festivals where we invite uh, specifically families, where then you know there is something for everyone, and the kids have an opportunity to to explore robotics, yeah. to explore the library, you know. Um, then we do a lot of outreach in, in, in schools as well. We do like a huge festival sometimes even as far as Swakopmund, you know, where we integrate robotics as well and we introduce it in the schools. Mm -hmm. Hi everyone, my name is Zakaria Kanganjera. Um, I will be, today I'll be reviewing the iPhone 15 Pro, comparing it to the 14 Pro. Um, and yes, uh, this is my first review, so do not come for me. These are just the slight uh, changes that I've seen and I've noticed or done research with. So yes, um, so the first thing we'll be looking at is the, the build and how, how they have improved um, the look of the iPhone 15 Pro and the feel. Um, basically, there's, there's, when you look at it fast, you don't you won't see any changes to it. You'll, the everything looks the the same. Basically, the screen size is exactly the same. The only improvement is that um, at the bottom of the screen, at the edges, there's, there's a slight curve. So this will make um, uh, screen protectors more more intricate if you think of it. Um, because the slight curve, it actually feels very nice when it's in your hand. At the bottom, um, another improvement that they have done is they have they changed the the, the charging port. Uh, they were forced by the EU to do this. Um, uh, they've iPhone has had um, a 13 pin port and to a lightning uh, port because simply they, they've had it because it was simply faster. It was a smaller chip so they could fit other things in the phone and now they're being forced by the EU to change to the USB-C port like every other Android phone um, so yeah that's um, uh, that's the another change that they've made but when they change the port we I would you would expect them to do improvements to the, uh, the cable or the port of um, the USB-C port now that is but then they, they actually haven't done any improvement it still charges at 25 watts um, there, there's no real improvement it's still reversible like the lightning cable the only difference is or the only problem is you when you're if you're an iPhone user um, you'll you'll be used to having bring it or taking your normal uh, lightning cable and trying to charge it but then um, yeah you just have to get used to this new USB-C cable basically um, that's one of the improvements that they've uh, physically with the phone now um, another thing that they have done with the, is they, they have a new chip uh, they've improved from the A, A16 um, processor to a, a A17 Pro chip um, this chip is much it's much faster than the previous one and it's actually on its way to reaching um, clocking speeds as um, the a the m1 chip of uh, of um, the macbook pros and um, yeah the laptops and the desktops of mac macbook that's one of the um, that's another improvement that they have done with uh, processing speed and all of that um, if for those that don't understand it's basically like having more horsepower um, in a car uh, compared to what you've previously had um, if I can put it in simple terms um, so yes that's uh, that's another improvement and then um, with the camera there's a lot of things that they've done with the camera um, the one thing that stood out for me that I'm that I want to speak on is um, them shooting in s-log or you can shoot now in s-log with the iPhone 15 Pro 
which is very convenient for people who do videography and stuff like that because now you can capture more detail with your videos um, and it's much more easier to go and edit because it, you have so much detail with that so you can you can do so much with the color grading and your um, yeah everything else so like um, because uh, Sony Sony is the one that came up with the S log uh, uh, feature and they have they have they are the only company that has mastered it and now um, iPhone as they, they they've included that in the 14 or 15 pro rather and I think that's a great improvement for people who want to do videography and stuff like that you can really um, do a lot with in your editing processing pro process in the process of editing videos and stuff like that yeah that's they've done a lot um the focus uh, it focuses more like the focus is much faster it processes more data uh, compared to the f uh, 14 pro um it's it's a really good camera but so yeah that's that's my little review um for the 15 pro um, I hope you love it. Uh, go check it out and see if it if there's anything else that I've missed out and that you maybe picked up.